Let's go deep. The Minnesota Wild are showcasing the depth of their lineup as guys are entering and exiting with injuries. Kirsten and I discuss that, plus the Wall of St. Paul's nearing debut, John Merrill's saving grace, and the PWHL creating an amazing atmosphere for all. As always, we're created by New Voice Studios, presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Talk North, Greenbelt, Livia, Royal Credit Union, and Jim Beam. This is Season 5, Episode 210. Let's do the Boldy Shuffle. Soda Stick's latest team collaboration features wild forward Matt Boldy, a Soda Stick and Hockey Lodge exclusive tee. Be sure to shop all Soda Stick sports merch at SodaStick.com, where Bardown Beauties gets you 15% off every purchase. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition. Like chanting, let's play hockey prior to the start of each game, or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Drink smart, Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume, copyright 2021, James B. Beam Distilling Company, Incorporated, Fairmont, Kentucky. Hello, everybody. What's going on? Bar Down Beauty, episode 210, 210, however you say that. I don't know how to say it, so that's why I fumbled that a little bit. I mean, Jesse Pierce, NHL.com writer, alongside Kirsten Kroll, in-house arena for your Minnesota Wild and your PWHL Minnesota squad. Kirsten, what's going on? Happy Monday. As always, we're recording this on a Monday for release on a Tuesday. Uh, what's going on? How's the beginning of your week? Uh, the beginning of my week is kicking my butt a little bit. I'm very unprepared this Monday. Like <laughs> I'm going to be so honest, guys. I just asked Jesse. I was like, who are the Wild even playing tonight? Like, It's the <laughs> start of January, and we still have at least 11 games left to go this month. Mm-hmm. And like, I feel like I'm already losing it. So please check in on me because <laughs> I'm just all over the place this morning. But other than that, doing good. That's good. That's good. You know, I do want to bring up, they are playing the Dallas Stars this evening. A Ah, Iskanen-less Dallas Stars team and a Jake uh, Ottinger-less Dallas Stars team. So I would like to remind everybody that last week I picked the Minnesota Wild to win this game when everybody laughed at me, mostly Kirsten. And I think they're actually going to freaking do it because they have Matt Murray in it. And it's not the Matt Murray everybody thinks it is. There are two Matt Murrays that play goalie in the National Hockey League. This is the one that nobody really knows about, not the one that everybody knows about. I'm really excited to clip this tomorrow morning when the episode's <laughs> released and send it to our dear friend Kevin Gorg because if the Wild, in fact, don't win, he is going to rip you a new one. But I'm not the one making the prediction tonight, so you know what? Good luck with well, that. Well, you already Let's did see. last week, so that also counts. That was my prediction. Yeah, that's fine. It's good. I'm excited okay. for it. Uh, we, we don't want to focus on tonight's game, but I do want to talk about Kirsten because I have a good feeling about a victory in Minnesota Wild's favor, which would give them two in a row, mind you, I want to talk about Marc-Andre Fleury again. Mm-hmm. I know we've given everything we've got for him. We love him. We adore him. We talked a lot about him last yeah. week. He's tied with Patrick Waugh for second all-time. Very unlikely he will ever reach Martin Brodeur's record set for wins all-time. But um, are you just happy? Personally, I'm just happy to be done with talking about him passing him just I want to give Marc-Andre Fleury a break like it is exciting I love it we all love it it's incredible to watch but man alive he's got to be exhausted with us bugging him about it I'm I want him to get the win so we can all take a break from talking about it yeah I definitely feel like on a personal standpoint I feel he wants it to happen but there's I think so much build up to it like everyone's just on guard on alert waiting for it to happen and Because of that, I feel he probably feels a little bit of that outside pressure too. So I feel he definitely wants that record, but yeah, just kind of ready to get it over with and move past it just to kind of look ahead to what's next. So I don't know. It's going to be something that'll be really cool. And I really hope it happens at home so that we can all be there for it. Just like we were for his thousandth game. Yeah. And I get to write more about it. So I always love that for me, which is very selfish. So Marc-Andre Fleury, please go get the win tonight. Again, recording this on a Monday. So I don't want to harp too much on it. Uh, But I do want to say wins are not goalie stats. I just would like to reiterate that, except in this case, then it is a a, a good goalie stat. I don't normally, I usually would always hate when they're like, well, he's got so many wins. It's like, that doesn't say a lot about his goaltending skills. Not Marc-Andre Fleury in particular. Let me clarify that. But I'm saying in general, when people harp on wins, as far as goalie stats, I don't believe it to be a good stat. Yeah, I 
I see the argument for and against because good goaltending can definitely win you a game, whereas bad goaltending can definitely take you out of a game. But I mean, yeah, there's more to it than just who's between the pipes. Right. How many shots you face? 12 shots. Good for you. You don't get that win. Like, I mean, your team got that win. But anyway, that's that's for another day. Sticking on the goaltending theme, uh, I'm going to get into injury updates later, but currently... Philip Gustafson still sidelined with a lower body injury. He has missed four games going on five tonight. Again, recording this Monday. I'm going to keep saying that because I don't want to like I'm infiltrated. I just got back from morning skate. So I'm thinking very heavily about tonight. Anyway, uh, Jesper Velstead recalled from Iowa. Yes. The wall of St. Paul is here. You guys, uh, Kirsten, we talked last week about, do we want him up? Do we not? And we were both kind of aligned in the fact that, you know, you want to have him seasoned in Iowa. However, You need him to be playing right now because the Minnesota Wild need to win. And no offense to Zane McIntyre, he ain't going to be the guy to do it. So while Gus is out, Jesper is the guy in. How much confidence do you have in Jesper Velstead stepping in? Because Marc-Andre Fleury has done well. He gets a six straight start against the Dallas Stars. Likelihood you will see Jesper make a debut, if not Wednesday in Dallas, one of the back-to-backs in St. Paul this weekend. What's your vibe on Jesper? He's just coming back from an injury himself. He got two games down in Iowa in before getting recalled. Are we excited? Are we optimistic? Are we a little kind of nervous about it? Um, I have very mixed feelings on this. First and foremost, I want to say definitely excited to see him. We know he's the future for the Minnesota Wild. We know he's going to be our goaltender, just waiting for the time people think next season, just waiting for him to come up. So everyone is truly dying to get a glimpse of what he's going to look like playing in an NHL game but also a little bit nervous because you look at the state of our team with all of the injuries, how poor our defense is, to be quite honest, and then you're going to throw him in net for his first NHL game. I think people's expectations for him are so high that I just – I don't think he's going to do bad in his first game. However, like I said, I think people have just built up and put him on such a pedestal that if he doesn't play his first game, how people have imagined him to – that there might be a lot of criticism coming from that. And I don't think that's fair. So those two things, very mixed feelings. Yeah, I I think that's fair. I got to say about Jesper having chatted with him, obviously throughout the course of his career at different camps and preseason, yada, yada. He has this confidence and it's not a cockiness. I don't want that to be confused at all because it's a very just good confidence that I think is very important for any player coming up into the NHL level, but especially a goaltender, one that is going to have this mass amount of pressure on him. Uh, you know, currently in Iowa, 11, nine and oh, with a 2.5 for goals against average 0.917 save percentage and two shutouts through 20 games down in the American hockey league, which is a big improvement from what we saw last year. Last year, you saw that struggle. I think he's definitely worked his way out of that international ice mentality where it's very different to come over and play on an NHL size sheet. That's something he continues to work work on but he's so technically sound and he's so focused on making sure even the small details are right that I think you put him in and we're going to be surprised at how normal he looks it's going to be very Mm -hmm. similar I feel maybe this is hopeful of course but I feel like it'll be like Brock Faber like you input him in there and you're like yep this is it it very well could be like that but you're right I think fans need to be patient with themselves too and just remember like he, you know he it takes a while to get used to i know i could probably jump into an nhl game and be just fine but like that's not the case for everybody and it's not not everyone can be you jesse i know i mean it's it's a challenge i think you put me on defense i certainly could be better than john merrill i am sorry i am not sorry this needs to end and i don't know why it has not uh again today's game monday Versus the Dallas Stars, Alex Goligoski, a healthy scratch in favor of Damon Hunt. Damon Hunt getting second power play unit opportunity to replace Goligoski. I like Damon Hunt. I like that. I like that Alex Goligoski is going to take a seat in the press box because he has also been very bad on defense. But so has John Merrill. Like, I just don't understand. We hypothesized this earlier, and I kind of am wondering... Is it because he's more capable on the PK than Damon Hunt would be? And they don't want to mess that up, especially against the Stars team where they crushed Minnesota on special teams last go around. But I don't I don't know what it is. Is it because he and John Hines go back to like New Jersey and TDP? Like, why is John Merrill still in our lineup? Yeah, I don't know why John Merrill is still in the lineup. I really don't have answers anymore. I we have called for it. We have asked. We have begged. We have pleaded. We have tried to make sense of the situation. 
And I truly am just like baffled. Like, why, why do we still have him on the roster? Like, can't we get rid of him? Is there anywhere we can send him? I don't know. And as far as Alex Goligoski is concerned, I would just really like him to move his no move clause. Basically, we want these two. I mean, at this point, I'm sorry, John Merrill is a defensive liability. Like, it's just not good. And Alex Goligoski also, like, I just, I would take a signed Gretzky jersey for John Merrill. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I would do. Like, that's my proposal. What are you, what are your thoughts? What about a cameo? Would you take a cameo? No, because I feel like those are, they're too, you know, they're too fake. Like you send the script to them for what they say. Like I, I would take like a dinner with Wayne Gretzky in the mm. most platonic way or like beers with Gretz. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think those are fair propositions. Maybe Yager. Maybe Yager. We'll do goose for Yager. Same thing. Yeah. Same deal. Yeah. I think that is a fair trade for sure. Yeah. But yeah. I just don't have answers anymore. I don't know what needs to be done. It is frustrating. I would love to know what you guys would trade for John Merrill and Alex Goligoski because that can be kind of fun. Likely to remind you guys, we like them as people. They are nice people. That's not what I'm trying to get at, but I can't watch them do what they're doing on the Minnesota Wild Blue Line anymore or what they're not doing, more or less. It's just very frustrating. It's not NHL caliber. Um, you know, Damon Hunt certainly has made mistakes of his own as well, but it's just kind of like, you know what? I'm ready. I'm ready to move on from it. Uh, before we take a break, I do want to talk about another defenseman formerly with the Minnesota Wild, currently with the Arizona Coyotes. Minnesota Wild hosting the Arizona Coyotes on Saturday. Yes, there are a number of players that are former Wild players with Min or with Arizona right now. But Matt Dumba, Kirsten, how big of an applause is he going to get? He was not exactly a fan favorite toward the end. He's had a lot of ups and downs in his fan career, fan likeness, likability, maybe is the right word. Uh is it going to be a, a big standing ovation for number 24, Matt Dumba? I do think overall, yes. I think people in Minnesota are appreciative of everything he did, not only on the ice when he was specifically in his prime with the team, but also just for everything he did for the community. Like, so good in the state of Minnesota. He did so much in that. Just you need to, when you talk about Matt Dumba, you have to mention everything he did off the ice. So I do think... There will be a huge, huge welcome back for him. I think it'll be a little emotional, but there's also like the thing with Dumba is people either absolutely loved him or there's like a small group of people who are just like, no. So yeah. I think overall, I think it'll be a very warm welcome back, but I do think unfortunately there's going to be some people who, who, you know, are just the way they are. Yeah, that's probably fair. I know I certainly took my on ice issues with Dumba too. Like there were times where you're like, what are you doing? And mm -hmm. that Dumba wasn't the same after getting into that fight in Calgary, right? He was not playing to the same caliber that he's capable of that power slap shot from the blue line was kind of gone. And that was the big, you know, praise of his, his career. Although you could also always depend on him. I'm excited to see the interaction post game and pregame with Broads and Eki and all of those guys. Cause he was a very beloved teammate for sure so I think that's what I'm most looking forward to and you're right Kirsten he is a guy that loved Minnesota I mean he gave back to the community he was trying to grow the game which I'm a huge fan of or huge advocates of here at Bardown Beauties um, do you see a future in which Matt Dumba returns to Minnesota for a lesser contract than maybe obviously what he took for Arizona I definitely think especially now that he's getting later in his career I could definitely see him taking more of a team friendly deal to try to come back to Minnesota. If the opportunity presented itself, especially too, while bro Dean is still on the team too, because we know how close those two were. Um, and then especially too, once Goligoski and Merrill's gone and it opens up <laughs> a couple roster spots, I definitely see him being willing to take a pay cut to come back here. That's the thing. If you have a room on your roster for a Marilyn Goligoski, I would very easily find room for a Matt Dumba, who is better. No matter how you felt about it, he was better than either of uh, either of those two players. God, they're so bad. I can't. Oh, they're so bad. All right. I, that's out of my system, I think, at least for the next five minutes. I don't minutes. think it's out of your system. It's never going to be out this of This is the system. warm up for the game this evening. <laughs> no, it's just, God, we're going to watch it over and over again. 
Hey, all right. Uh, before we take our first quick break, I do want to give an injury update for the Minnesota Wilds. Jonas Brodeen, Kirill Kaprizov, Philip Gustafson have been skating. They are on the ice. They are not with the group in any stretch of the imagination. They are not practicing, but they have taken that next step. Um, Kirsten, though, how impressed have you been with how the Minnesota Wild have been able to handle this adversity? I mean, they're not just missing bodies. They are missing their best players, which is already kind of not a plen- not plentiful, I guess you could say, for the Minnesota Wild. They don't have a whole lot of them. Um, and it's great to see Matt Zuccarello return. It's great to see Matt Boldy and Marco Rossi do their thing. Joe Hansen's kind of stepped up. But how impressed have you been with the depth that this team has shown and kind of the resiliency that they've shown uh, through this stretch of a rash of injuries? Very impressed, very happy. Even some of the games that they have lost, it hasn't necessarily been because they've – just all out played a terrible game. It was just, they, in a sense, yeah, got outplayed, but they still showed up. Like, as I have said, it is the Minnesota Iowa wild. We essentially have half of an AHL roster up here right now. And I saw a really funny tweet too, the other day that was like, you know, we're really scraping the bottom of the barrel when we start calling up players we have never heard of before. So I just, I thought that was funny, but no, I'm really impressed. I think it's giving younger guys an opportunity that definitely didn't think that they would have to be called up earlier this season. Um, I think a concerning thing for me was also reading online, Bill Guerin had said and quoted, I've never seen anything like this before. (laughs) So that's kind of like, ooh, like, it just kind of put into perspective how bad of a spot we're in right now with all of these injuries. I think we're about to come out on the other side of it. But in the meantime, have been very impressed with how a lot of guys have stepped up or come into their own. I mean, yeah, and eventually you're going to want to see how these guys perform. I think, if anything, the concerning point is maybe the Iowa Wild aren't quite as good or quite as ready as as you'd hope. I mean, I think the better prospects have yet to come over here. I think you got Danilia Yurov. You think you've got uh, Liam Ogren. Sorry about that. Silver Liam. No, I'm not. Go USA. What? what? Uh, but sorry. I love the World Juniors, Kirsten. Get I know it. you do. Almost as it. much as Matamidae. Almost as much as Matamita. God bless it. Yes. I just, I have my things. These are my things. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that's the one kind of concerning point about having these players up here is like, ugh, I'm not overly in love with any of it. Now, granted, that's not necessarily fair because it takes a while. You're jumping into a system. You're jumping into the middle of this, but either way, we'll see you guys. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back. I want to talk PWHL Minnesota. We're going to take a look at the wild week ahead and we have some fan questions to get to as well. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Jesse Pierce here with Bardown Beauties reminding you that this new year, choose you. If you've tried every which way to lose weight and haven't seen the results you want, I'd like to introduce you to the Livia Way. The Livia Way is a personalized one-on-one approach to help you not only lose weight, but also boost your self-confidence and guide you to a healthier and happier version of yourself. If you join Livia today, you'll get your first months absolutely free. That's right. First three months, absolutely free. It couldn't be better. I know it has worked for me. The one-on-one support at my Woodbury Clinic has done tremendous things. It's why I've lost more than 30 pounds. It's why I've dropped 19 inches and I continue to go. I could not be more thrilled by choosing me this year. You should do the same. Visit Livia.com or call 855-GO-LIVIA. New year, choose you. Let's get started the Livia way. What's up? We're back. Let's get to some fan questions regarding the Minnesota Wild curse. And first question we have coming to us from Michael Sullivan. He asks, what other players would you like to see the Wild call up and give a shot from the Iowa roster? As we just discussed in the first segment, there are a lot of Iowa players currently rostered. But is there anybody that we haven't seen that you would like to see called up? I mean, this is kind of the low hanging fruit that's easiest to say, although like I've had mixed feelings Jesper Wallstedt is the one we want to see who we haven't got to see. So definitely interested to see what he's capable of and what he can do. So, I mean, that's, I think, the obvious one. And to be fair, we also haven't seen... There's not many players left in Iowa we haven't seen this season. Mm -hmm. No, that's true. I would like to see Ryan O'Rourke on defense Mm -hmm. or Carson Lambos. I think I've mentioned Carson Lambos a number of times. I really want to see that. I would like to see a little help on the blue line. Again, I think Damon Hunt has been good. Dakota Mermis has been good. But I'd like to see those guys as far as defensemen. 
Um, and then I would like to see Adam Beckman. I know he's been kind of a, you know, a loved one during the preseason for a couple of years. He is hurt right now still, I believe, but I think Adam Beckman for a forward would be nice to take a little glimpse at if they were to, or Nick Sweeney, one of Minnesota's mm-hmm. own, um, would be another one that I know has done well during camps that I've, I've liked as well. So give me, give me one of those, but I think that's a good question. Kirsten, what you got? Yeah. Well now Jesse, I have a question for you from offside hockey talk. Some Leafs fans want the flower to be traded. Here is he even on the move. One, I doubt. No, he's not on the move because this is the final year of his contract. Shout out to Offside Hockey Talk. By the way, James is doing great things over there talking about the Toronto Maple Leaf. So we heart you. Thank you for your support here. Uh, Congrats on Willie Nylander, too, and having money to sign players to contracts like that. But anyway, um, no, Flowers not on the move. Last year's contract with the Wild, if he continues to play, I bet he goes to Pittsburgh. I don't think he would entertain the idea anywhere else. Sure, he wants to win a cup, but I a, and I also don't think Toronto wants to spend any real money. They could use a goaltender for sure, and Mark Andre Fleury could be a step up from the goaltending that they have received this year. It'd be kind of funny if Fleury went in and took Matt Murray's job as Matt Murray did for Fleury in Pittsburgh. But um, no, any just ultimate no. Anything to add, Kirsten? Um, also a no, and also I just especially after hearing about Nylander, just wondering how Toronto has money or Oof. even more money to continue to sign players to big deals. Like 46 That's a little bit and of a half. tangent. Where is this money coming from? Because they have signed a lot of players to a lot of big contracts. 46 and a half million for their core four, I believe, which is Matthews, Tavares, Nylander, and Marner, right? Like, I think that's what I read um no it's like the dodgers they just keep pulling money out of a hat and it's like yay we have all this money i mean again you're talking to a cash strapped minnesota wild squad so but is it really worth it to spend all that money if historically you don't make it out of the first round except for one year just saying just had to throw that in there yeah i know that's fair my question for you coming to uh coming to us from doug phil Wants to know, predict what should happen on the February 20th game versus Winnipeg, given the recent rivalry controversy. If you have been living under a rock and are unaware of this controversy, it began on a night, December 30th, in Winnipeg, when Kirill Kaprizov was knocked out of the game and has been suffering this injury since then uh, from Brendan Dillon and a couple cross checks to the hip area or to the rib area, what have you. Brendan Dillon answered the call with Jake Middleton. Then Winnipeg comes to Minnesota the very next night on New Year's Eve afternoon game. Right off the go, Pat Maroon and Adam Lowry drop the mitts. You think it's done? It's not done because it turns out Ryan Hartman high-sticked Cole Perfredi in the face on the draw later on in the first period. Cole Perfredi claims that that was there was he had a hot mic. It was caught on tape that Ryan Hartman said this is for Kaprizov. Um, and Ryan Hartman now has since come out and said has denied it. Ryan Hartman has been fined for the incident, no suspension. Um, you know, we all know Hartsey here is kind of a hothead, but that's sums up the love that about him. <laughs> it is what it is. So February 20th is the next time these two teams will meet since all of this, uh, circus has been created. And, uh, Kirsten, how, how do you think that game's going to go? I don't necessarily think the Wild will make the first move in that game, if anything, unless Winnipeg does something. I, Based on history, and I'm trying to be careful, too, because I don't want to be like, oh, Winnipeg's dirty. I just, I don't know exactly how to describe the situation with the Wild. But, I mean, it's a rivalry, right? And just coincidentally, there have been a number of very bad plays resulting in an injured Kirill Kaprizov. I don't want to outright be like, yeah, it was targeted. They're trying to injure our players. I don't want to say that at all because we don't know. But I do think just history repeats itself. I am confident in saying I think Winnipeg will do something else. Wild will answer the call. Also, if in that game you need me to suit up like as a decoy Kirill Kaprizov (laughs) just to protect him and his ribs from any dirty cross checks, I'm willing to sacrifice a rib. That's that's kind of you. That's kind Thank of you. you. He might need one still. I mean, we don't know. We don't know. He's he's on the ice, but might still need one. Just be on standby mm-hmm. for us. Yeah, if you can. I will. You know where to find me. 
I do. My whole take on the controversy is I don't like what Ryan Hartman did. I don't like using the stick as a weapon. I think then you're crossing the line into intent to injure. Um, going back even to the Kaprizov thing, it's so funny because it really depends on which team you're a fan of, right? Minnesota Wild have certainly had players in their past that have cross-checked the crap out of a superstar on another team. Now, that is the problem. Min- the Winnipeg Jets do have a history of constantly hurting Minnesota's one tried and true superstar in Kirill Kaprizov. So that I understand the frustrations. Um, I think by February 20th, I imagine things have cooled down a bit, not to mention that February 20th game, Minnesota's probably still going to be trying to claw their way back into the playoff. Winnipeg is continuing this point streak. They're at 12 games right now. So they're hot. I don't know if they're ever going to fall off like they did last year or not. So I think Winnipeg might not care. Minnesota is too desperate probably still at that point to bother with getting penalties so i'm gonna guess it's a wash if not it's gonna go completely the other way and have an ambulance on standby right like i don't know it's it's either super hostile or super meh it's there's no in between yeah i agree with that i'm leaning more towards the hostile side though and i think winnipeg will come out first and be the team to start something just again history repeats itself and i hope that if there are some you know, plays that cross the line that they actually get called for once. <laughs> so and again, just... it goes on both sides. Like I not to play devil's advocate, but literally when I saw the Brendan Dillon thing, like he's not the first player to do that. He's not the only player to ever do that. Right. And again, it, it's a, pardon my language. It's a shitty thing to do. Like when you're cross-checking someone, not once, but twice, but I've seen way worse done to a player. Like, and you know, I think Kaprizov just ends up getting hit in the right way. Like he's a tough son of a gun. Like I don't think he's soft by any means, but it is kind of, it's just ironic. I think some of it's like coincidental because if Ryan Hartman does that to somebody else, I'm sure wild fans aren't going to be like, Oh, it's fine. Like they're, I don't know. It just seems like I am. I totally side with you on the Ryan Hartman thing. I just think I have a personal vendetta against NHL officiating this season, and I'm not taking my foot off the gas on it until something happens for consistency. That's all I'm saying. And now we will move into a question for Jesse. Yes. Um, Jake Berglund, given how bad our injury bug has been this year, would you agree that having the AHL team in Des Moines instead of Houston has really benefited the wild? If you recall, the wild's first affiliate was the Houston arrows from 2000 to 2013. Oh, a hundred percent. I think that there's no question. I always found it odd because Iowa used to host the Iowa hogs, which I think was the Anaheim affiliate. Like they never had anything for Minnesota when it was like, they're right there. It's a three and a half hour stretch down to Des Moines on 35. It's a straight shot. Obviously now they're not always home when you need to make this recall. So sometimes there's still those movie mechanics where they're on the road or you want to do this and that, but yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's a huge benefit because I don't know. And I could be completely wrong on this. I don't know that there are a lot of AHL affiliates that are nearly as close as Iowa, Minnesota, like running through my head. I can't think of anything off the gut, but I love it. I feel like Rockford. I mean, it's further from Chicago, but yeah, you're right. Decently close. But you think of like the Milwaukee admirals and the national predators, right? Like, I mean, those are like a lot of them to me in my head, Hartford Wolfpack and the Rangers, I think are kind of close. Like, a lot of them, I think, are at least a, a bigger distance than four like hours. Like a state away. Things. Yeah. But then again, out east, they kind of always do that weird state thing. Yeah. Like, they're all kind of, like, clumped up. Yeah. No, I agree. I think the closer, the better. And I think even talking, like, a different sport a little bit, uh, you look at how close the Minnesota Twins are to the St. Paul Saints, like, literally yeah. just across the way. So I think the closer you are, the better it is, especially given the unfortunate circumstances of this season this season Mm. speaking let's stick on the injury bug here jason judding wants to know do you think when we get everyone healthy that we could make a push for the playoffs or not um i mean there's always a chance right i think if we do it'll be definitely a wild card spot we will just scratch our way in but we're not winning the cup this year it's Mm. not going to be our year for that but i think we have a chance to claw our way in but there's still we gotta just stick it out while everyone's still out we have to still win some games to be in just the conversation so there's always a chance i think they miss it this year and i can't remember i think i was always on boat with you where it was like it's definitely a wild card spot um 
I just, I think they're too far behind the eight ball. I think they really kind of screwed the pooch to start the season out. And why does everybody laugh when I say that? Is that not a term? That it is a weird, I, it's a weird expression. <laughs> I used it on John's hockey show last week too. And he was like, huh? I was like, do exactly. We not- it's I- <laughs> odd choice of words. I, well, whatever. I'm sticking with it. They did. I mean, they're just, I think it's going to be really, really, really hard, especially now as they get into the brunt of the central division schedule. And as they get into kind of the meat of it all, where they're playing every other night and it's kind of go, go, go. Um, injuries or not, it's going to be very, very challenging for Minnesota Wild to make that big of a climb um, in their favor. And then you need other teams to lose. Like I said, you need mm-hmm. Winnipeg to cool off. You need Colorado to fall. Like you, there's other things that have to happen besides Minnesota just winning. So, no, I don't think they make a playoff push. Yeah, it's gonna be gonna be hard. But one last question from our great friends, the Fab Five. Has there ever been an NHL team in the last decade with such a high percentage of active team salary cap out on IR at the same time? Great question. I'm sure there has. Like Vegas, right? Toronto. I'm sure it's happened. I don't know. I should probably do some research before answering it. But I I feel like it's probably, again, every team goes through these injuries, even Dallas had some big names out, right? Calgary had half their big stars out for a while. Florida did when they came to Mm -hmm. visit Minnesota. Like, it's definitely not completely unheard of. What doesn't help is when you have that amount of money sitting in your press box, plus you have that amount of money that is playing hockey elsewhere. And, like, Mm -hmm. you know, like Ryan Suter and Zach Parisi, that's a lot of money that you're not cashing. I could could use some of that money, frankly. I could, too. And... Honestly, I feel like Suter and Parisi are making enough money if they want to send some my way, just like as like a I feel bad for you kind of thing. I'll gladly take it. Pity money or not, I'll take it. I mean, maybe we should since we we have a a lot of stuff to talk about with Bill Guerin at some point here, Mm -hmm. but um, maybe he signs us to like a minimal contract of some sort just to just to pay us like, you know. Yeah, for the vibes. I can bring the vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Uh, One Final question we have before we end wrap up uh cues of the boots. Yoshi 450R would like to know, should we keep Raska in the lineup? He showed so much heart. I thought Mason Shaw was back. Uh for those that missed it, Raska had jumped into the lineup on um, excuse me, Saturday against Columbus. Played min- played more minutes than Nick Patan. Nick Patan currently scratched right now. Um, I liked it. He does have an energy. It's a new energy. To be completely honest, I had no idea who he was when he was recalled. Um but I, yeah, I, I don't mind it. I don't think he's a Mason Shaw. He doesn't have that kind of vibe, but it's not terrible. Yeah. We could always use a player that has that dog in him. Mason Shaw definitely had that dog in him. So yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I'm okay with it. Yeah. Uh, I like it. Let's, let's go with that. Uh, thanks again for all your questions. As always, you can comment, drop your cues any point in time, email bar down beauties pod at gmail.com. We love the interaction, love the engagement, love knowing what you guys want to know and hear from our bar down beauties podcast. Uh, before we wrap up this week's episode, Kirsten PWHL Minnesota in the house. Um, you know, I know a lot's been made, so we won't harp too much on the opener. Uh, but hell of a time on Saturday as Minnesota, not only won three to zero, but broke a record for most watched women's game in the state with nearly 14,000. What was it like for you, Kirsten, in your role as in arena host? I know from my perspective up in the press box, I still get chills. I was relaying mm-hmm. the information to Gorgie this morning and I still got chills because it was just an amazing atmosphere. Yeah. I have chills just you talking about it right now. It was it was just such a surreal experience and I'm so thankful to have been just like a small part of that atmosphere on Saturday. It truly is just an experience I will never forget. I was interviewing Taylor Heisey during warmups on the bench and it was broadcast to the whole arena. And even before she started talking, just the fans, they were loud, like cheering her on and you could see the smile on her face. Like everyone was feeling it. And it was so cool, too, because I was unaware of how many tickets we were continuing to sell. They had the 200s level all tarped off. And then somebody came up and they're like, yeah, we've sold so many tickets. They're literally taking the covers off right now. Like we had people all the way up top sitting down and the fans were in it right from the beginning, from puck drop, screaming, chanting right up until the end when they started the wave. And I will say that is the (laughs) longest wave I have ever seen at a sporting event. It was so amazing. So many young girls out there too in the crowd watching. 
And I had a few different people come up to me too, just saying how cool this experience is and how they continue, hope to continue to see this continue to climb. We're already sold out of season tickets too, at least last time I checked. So really see, incredible. That's in, that is incredible. They are hosting the Toronto squad coming up here Wednesday, January 10th at 7 p.m. Uh, and then they have another home game on Sunday, G January 14th at three against New York. Um, it was it was a lot of fun. I think the one thing that sticks out to me, too, is, you know, you saw all of the kids and the young girls that play hockey. Right. And obviously that's incredible. So they have these role models to look up to. But I was even more taken aback by like the older women who probably still play in an adult league or coached or played when they were kids and they never had dreamed this. Like my mom, who's a huge hockey fan, never really watched women's hockey, though, because it wasn't a thing. Like she grew up up north. She just never really played, like never really had that interest. She'd rather just play with the boys, right? Um, and even she tuned in to watch the game and just kind of experience. She's like, that's really cool. So I mean, you're getting new fans, you're getting these old fans, you're it's accomplishing so much. It was just a really incredible moment to be a part. Grace is like, I couldn't even put into words. And Maddie said it was electric. And you know, we if anybody watches the game, it wasn't their best first period, but that's because they were all nervous. Head coach Ken Klee was like, I asked the girls, how many of you ever played in front of that many people? And not one could raise their hand because they never have. So, I mean, keep that up. Let them have those nerves and that excitement because it is, it's something really special. So that's my biggest challenge to mm -hmm. you. Keep the PWHL Minnesota rocking and rolling, make it a hard place for our opposition to play in like it is for the men. Uh, before we wrap up, Kirsten, the wild week ahead. It's going to be a good week again. We predicted our Dallas game that is being played this evening on Monday, but they are in Dallas on Wednesday. Then they got a back-to-back -back versus Philly and Arizona Friday, Saturday. And do they play next Monday? No, they must not play next Monday. Do they? No, I think they play next Monday. They do play next Monday as well. That's right. Let me, but it's, Oh, it's yes. It's a uh, afternoon game against the New York Islanders. Mm -hmm. So Chris, what you got for a skit? What you got for a record? Um, well, I'm just going to go through. They're going to lose to Dallas. For tonight, I'm going to – tonight, Monday, just repeating it, they're going to lose to Dallas. What, they play Dallas again on Wednesday? Wednesday. They're Dallas. going to lose yep. again to Dallas on okay. Wednesday. To Philly, that tort squad, I'm also going to say they're going to lose. I think they do pull out a win against Arizona, though. Okay. And what about New York, the Islanders? Um, hmm. The vibes are telling me they're going to lose that, too. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ooh, Maybe ooh. this is me being pessimistic again. <laughs> Yikes. I just, I'm going strictly on vibes. I'm sorry. You want to know what my vibes are saying? Four and oh, baby. Let's go. I That's actually a lie. I take that back. I immediate regret. They're going to lose on Wednesday, but then they're going to win the rest. So it's going to be okay. three and one. They will lose Wednesday. They will beat Philly. They will beat Arizona. And they will beat the New York Islanders as well. Okay. One of those is going to go They're going to like your vibes more than mine. Yeah. No, one I of like them is going to be overtime. But I don't know which one, but one of them will be. Maybe, like, Philly will be overtime. Yeah. Some, one of them will be. I'm not committing to Philly. There will be one overtime win, but they are going to go 3-1. and one. I like it. Um, yeah. I'm feeling good about it. Yeehaw. I Yeehaw. like it. <laughs> Just the awkward silence. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I got you. No worries. Favorite hockey moment of the week? You got one? It was definitely PWHL. That was so Smart. cool. I got to interview second intermission, Laura Halderson, and she was fantastic. She also too, it was kind of one of those moments too, like hearing her talk, you were getting emotional and she got the whole crowd going. She definitely took a moment too to honor people from the past that definitely helped us get to that moment with the PWHL and the how just kind of recognizing there were so many women and pioneers in women's hockey who helped make this possible. And I even had a couple fans come up to me after that interview and they're like, that was incredible. Like everything she said was great. And so she truly was fantastic. So that whole moment, that whole day was my favorite. Yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't agree more. That was probably the highlight of the week last week, really. I mean, you could just feel the excitement being built up for it, built up for it, and then to see it actually come to fruition. I love that Laura Halderson 
has not changed her look or her vibe <laughs> in like all the time that I've known her. I've done quite a few stories on her because she's just a tremendous woman, tremendous human being. But I was like, Absolutely. she looks the same always. Like it, credit to her. She looks great, but it's just mm -hmm. so funny. I'm like, she hasn't changed the damn thing mm -hmm. in like 20 years, which I love. Yeah such a sweet woman also shout out to the men for really showing up yes. showing out jonas brodeen philip gustafson marcus felino and marcus felino bringing his daughters out too like that truly also is very heartwarming also putting your money where your mouth is like really supporting this league and these women so that was amazing to see mm -hmm. yeah shout out to everybody Again, don't forget to continue that support throughout the season. Shout out to all of you for listening to us as always. You can catch us live January 18th at Park Place. We have a watch party ahead of the Minnesota Wild Tampa Bay Lightning game. So come check us out there. Great atmosphere, great fun, beer specials and giveaways, all the good stuff. Shout out to Greenbelt for that. Uh, Talk North, Royal Credit Union, Soda Stick, Livia and Jim Beam. And as always, to each and every one of you, let us know what you thought of this week's episode. Subscribe, rate, share with your friends. Tell the people about the bar down beauties and uh tune in next week for another brand new episode until then have a good one go wild good work mm -hmm.